Hi everyone, welcome to another lesson video from JiggyMath. So this time it is about optimization. So this is an application or one of the applications of differentiation, particularly finding the stationary points. So uh, speaking about stationary points, let's try to recall first stationary points. Okay, now let's look at this diagram. This diagram or this graph of f of x. Okay, so looking at this graph, we can actually identify stationary points. And what are those? They are points B, C, D, and E. Okay, so you can see the horizontal tangents at this point. So they are our stationary points. Now, you may notice as well that C and E, these points C and E, are the local minimum points. Okay, they are local minimum points. But... Okay, if you look at the domain of this graph, and that is from A to F, you may notice that at point A, the least of the function, the least value of the function occurs at this point. All right. On the other hand, we also have stationary points B and D, which are considered to be our local maximum points. But within the domain, we have F. Okay, and at, at this point f, the largest value of the function can occur. All right, so when you are now solving optimization problems, you have to consider also whether there are values that are bigger than the local maximum or lower than the local minimum points. Now, when solving optimization problems, you also have to be aware that some functions actually don't have minimum or maximum values. And some examples of which are y is equal to tangent x and the other one is y is equal to 1 over x. Now, notice that both of these functions are asymptotic. So if you see at this uh, asymptote, it is uh, going to the positive infinity. So there is no obviously maximum value. Now, on the other side, this goes to the negative infinity. So there is also no minimum values. So the same thing happens to this. Uh, y is equal to 1 over x. Now, we can also show it this way. So we're in, we find the derivative of tangent x, which is equal to secant squared x. And then to find the stationary point, assuming that there is, so we equate that to zero. So secant squared x is equal to zero. And then get the square root of both sides, then we will get secant x is equal to zero. And then obviously, that equation doesn't have any solution. So one over cosine x is equal to zero. Um, that will have no solution at all, right? Okay, and then the other one is y is equal to 1 over x. And the first derivative of that is negative 1 over x squared. Equate that to 0, and then um, x squared multiplied to 0, and then it will result to 0 is equal to negative 1. And that is a false statement. So therefore, we can conclude that it doesn't have a solution at all. All right? Now, when we say optimization, it is about maximizing or minimizing y by changing x. Okay, so it is about maximizing or minimizing one quantity by changing another quantity. Usually y is our dependent variable and x is our independent variable. So you have to identify what quantity or what dependent variable are we trying to maximize or minimize. So the first um, step is find the relationship between y and x, then differentiate. So usually the first step is given, or sometimes if it is not given, then you have to formulate your function rule. So of course, the second step is, um, uh, I mean, the step followed by that is to find the derivative of it. And the second step now is we have to solve dy dx is equal to zero to get the stationary points. All right, and then the third step is we need to determine the nature of the stationary points, whether it is a minimum, maximum, or inflection by considering the second derivative. We know that if the second derivative is greater than zero, then we have a minimum. If it is less than zero, then we have a maximum. If the second derivative is equal to zero, then we can have a possible inflection. 
So number four is uh, check whether the endpoints of the domain are actually global maximum or minimum points and check that there are no vertical asymptotes, okay? So let's take a look at first example. What are the minimum and maximum values of y is equal to ln x? Now, within the given domain such that x is more than or equal to 1 but less than or equal to 10, okay? So... Um, let's try to get the uh, derivative of this. y is equal to ln x. The first derivative is equal to 1 over x. Set that to 0. Obviously, there is no stationary point. Okay, so this is also an example of a function that doesn't have a stationary point. And if you're going to graph it, it is asymptotic, right? Okay, so what we can do now is to plug in all right, the endpoints of our domain. So in this case, when x is equal to 1, we are going to get our minimum value. So the minimum value is the value of y when x is equal to 1. So y is equal to ln 1, which is equal to 0. Therefore, 0 is our minimum value. And the maximum value is the value of the function when x is equal to 10. So y is equal to ln 10, which is approximately equal to 2.30. All right, now the next one is what are the minimum and maximum values of y is equal to sine x plus 2x when x is more than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 2 pi. So what is the derivative of uh, our function here? So the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to cosine x plus 2 cosine x plus 2. Now, when you equate that to 0, we will have cosine x is equal to negative 2. And you know that cosine x can never be equal to negative 2. That will be impossible because the range of the function cosine x is just between um, its, its cosine x is more than or equal to negative 1, but less than or equal to 1. Okay, so what we can do here is what? Again, we substitute the uh, minimum value or the least value in our domain which is zero so we will get now y is equal to sine sine zero plus two times zero what is sine zero sine zero is equal to uh zero plus zero therefore the minimum value is zero and um the maximum therefore is when we sub substitute two pi to our function so sine 2 pi is equal to 0 plus 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi so the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 4 pi all right now let's go to a uh, second example what are the minimum and maximum values of f of x is equal to x cubed over 3 minus 4x in this given domain all right, so again, f find the first derivative. The relationship has already been given, so the next thing to do is to differentiate this. All right, so f prime of x is equal to x squared minus 4. Equate this to 0 and then factorize it, then we will get x equals 2, x equals negative 2. Okay, so the next thing to do is to find the second derivative, and it is equal to 2x. So what we can do now is to uh, find the value of the second derivative. When x is equal to negative 2, it is equal to negative 4. So that means the double uh, f double prime of x is negative, less than 0. So this is where our maximum value can occur. That is at x equals negative 2. Now when x is equal to 2, our f double prime of x is positive. So this is where we can have our minimum values. The values of the function at x equals negative 2, and that is approximately 5.33. And then f of 2 is approximately negative 5.33. All right, so we go now to the fourth step, and that is to check whether these are global maximum or global minimum. Okay, so that means we need to find f of negative 3. And that is equal to positive 3. And then f of uh, 3 is equal to negative 3. So what we can compare is f of negative 2 and f of negative 3. And this is uh, greater than, greater than. So what does this mean? If f of negative 2 is greater than f of negative 3, then we can say that negative 2 is our global uh, maximum. 
So the next thing to do is to compare f of 2 and f of 3 and then obviously f of 2 is less than negative 3. So we can say now we can conclude that at x equals 2 we have our global minimum value. Now let's have this particular application problem. An industrial shed is to have a total floor space of 600 square meters and is to be divided into three rectangular rooms of equal size. The walls internal and external will cost $60 per meter to build. What dimension should a shed have to minimize the cost of the walls? So you see the equation is not given yet. So we will be the ones to find out the function rule. Okay, so let's take a look at the given information and I think one good strategy is for us to illustrate. So there is a big uh, industrial shed with a space of 600 square meters. So let x be uh, the width of one rectangular room and then y to be our uh, length. So the area which is equal to 600 uh, square meters will be equal to y uh, times 3x, correct? So because this is x plus x plus x, so that would be 3x times y is equal to 600. Now we can make y as the subject and that would be y is equal to 200 over x. Now we can also calculate the perimeter. So perimeter will be equal to uh, this is y plus 2, 3, 4. So we have 4y plus 6x. So 3x here and then 3x at the opposite side. Now what we want is uh, a cost function. Why? Because that is what we want to minimize. Minimize the cost of the walls. So the cost can be obtained by uh, multiplying this 60 per meter or $60 to the perimeter. But you see our perimeter is expressed in terms of y and x. So from y here, we can now rewrite our perimeter as 4 times 200 over x plus 6x. So simplify this, it will become 800 over x plus 6x. So that perimeter to be multiplied to 60, we will come up with our cost function. So since this is what we want to minimize, which is the cost, so this is the function now that we have to differentiate. So c prime of x, or the derivative, is equal to negative 48,000 x to the power of negative 2 plus 360. So since minimize, we have to set this to 0 and then we solve for x. So we will find x equals 11.6 meters using a quadratic formula or um, any method in solving quadratic equation. And then um, we, since there's only one value of x, I think we are pretty sure that this is the value of x that will give us the minimum cost. But for us to be sure, that's, we can use the second derivative to test. Uh, and then to find out the nature of our value of x. And then c double prime of x will give us 96,000 of x. Substitute 11.6, obviously it will give us a positive value. So therefore, at x equals 11.6, this is the value of x that will give us the minimum cost. Okay, so um, then from there, okay, from this equation, y is equal to 200 over x, we will find the value of y. Now, let's go back to the question, what dimension should the shed have? So this whole thing is the industrial shed. So that means the dimension will be 3 times x, which is 11.6 times 3, which will give us 34.8. And the length, which is our y, is 17.3. So the dimensions should be 17.3 by 34.8 meters. Now let's go to the second problem. Find the most economical shape, which is the minimum surface area for a box with a square base, vertical sides, and an open top, given that it must contain four liters. Okay, so this is now what we are trying to minimize, and that is the surface area, which means we need to have a surface area function. Okay, and we are talking about the area of a box with a square base, vertical sides, and an open top okay and it somehow looks like this now it is better for us to use variables to represent something like for example uh, let x be the side of the square base so this is our square base but imagine it's going to be an open top all right so let x be our 
uh, we'll let x be the side of the square okay and then the vertical side which is going to be our height and then let's represent that as our h okay so from here we can now find our area function okay now all right now let's take a look at the other information which is the volume is four liters so we are minimizing the surface area in such a way that the volume is four liters we know that the volume of this solid is equal to length times width times the height now since we have x by x by h then it's going to be x squared times h now four liters so we need to convert liters in cubic mit, uh, meters so it's going to be 4,000 is equal to x squared h. Now what we want is um, we can express h in terms of four, in terms of x. So h now is equal to 4,000 over x squared. All right. Now why do we need to do that? Because we need a volume, a surface area function in terms of just one variable. We are just only talking about function with a dependent variable. And another independent variable so in this case we have surface area which is our dependent and then X will be our independent okay so that means H really needs to be expressed in terms of X so what now is the surface area from this figure we will have surface area will be equal to the area of the base just the, the, the square base okay because this one is open and then what are the other then we have the four uh, faces, right? Okay, so we need also to get the area of that. So surface area will be the area of the square base plus area of the side of faces multiplied by four. Okay, so area of, area of the base is x squared and then area of one face is x times h, but since there are four, then that will be plus four x h. And then h is 4,000 over x squared, so we can, uh, uh, write it this way in terms of just one variable x then we now have our area function x squared plus 16,000 x to the power of negative 1 okay so this is now the function that we can differentiate so a prime of x is equal to 2x minus 16,000 over x squared all right, or that is minus 16,000 x to the power of negative 2. So we need to equate the first derivative to 0, and we need to solve this equation. So this equation will be, uh, will be transformed into a cubic. 2x cubed is equal to 16,000 divided by 2. Both sides, we will get x cubed is equal to 8,000. Then get the cube root, we will get now x equals 20. So there's just one stationary point. All right. Now, for us to confirm, we need to get the second derivative. So the second derivative is just to confirm if really x equals 20 will give us the minimum surface area. So a double prime of x will be equal to 2 plus, okay, 2 plus uh, 32,000 over x cubed. Okay, so what is a double prime of 20? And that will give us a positive number. So a double prime of x or a double prime of 20 is something positive. Therefore, it is true enough that x equals 20 will give us the minimum surface area. Okay, now uh, the, the question is, no, okay, so it, now the question is, let's, now let's go back to the question, what are the dimensions of this open box? So we will get x equals 20. So since we have a square base, that's going to be 20 by 20, and the height will be equal to 10. All right, so this is the end of the video. So thank you for listening. Happy learning. See you next time. Goodbye.